Ya. Yeah. Good morning everyone and welcome to Scarborough and the Scarborough Agent Court. My name is Aris Pabiken. I am the proud MPP for the people of Scarborough Agent Court. I am honored to be joined today by the new Minister of Transportation, Prambit Sarkaria, the Associate Minister of Transportation, Todd McCarthy, Phil Vester, President and CEO of Metrolinx, and of my friend and fellow Scarborough MPP, Vijay Tanagasalam. Agent Court Go Station is a critical transportation hub for our community, connecting the Scarborough and the Scarborough Agent Court to the rest of the GTHA. And as our community grows, we need to continue investing. That's why, as the MPP, I am focused on building new infrastructure for the people of Scarborough. I'm excited to have my colleagues here with me today to announce our government's continued commitment to invest in public transit. With that, please join me in welcoming Ontario's new Associate Minister of Transportation, Todd McCarthy. Thank you, uh, MPP Babikian, and that's a very kind introduction. Thank you all for joining us this morning in beautiful Scarborough Agent Court, where I grew up. It's a pleasure to be here alongside Minister Sarkaria, local MPP Aris Babikian, MPP VJ Thanagasalam, and Phil Verster, the president of Metrolinx. As Ontario's new Associate Minister of Transportation, I'm thrilled to commence my tenure with this terrific GO Transit infrastructure announcement and to carry on the incredible work started by Minister Caroline Mulroney and Minister Stan Cho. As our population continues to grow, building reliable public transportation has never been more important. Investing in a world-class transit system makes it easier for people to get to work, school and appointments, improving the quality of life. It helps businesses grow and makes our economy strong. That's why our government is making historic investments in the GO Transit network to offer two-way all-day service between Toronto and Markham by 2031. Upgrades to the network means more train trips and fewer cars on the road, reducing gridlock while making travel faster, safer, and more convenient for commuters in Toronto, Scarborough, and Markham. Today marks a significant milestone on that journey. It demonstrates that our government is building world-class public transit that keeps people moving and the economy growing. More fundamentally, it demonstrates that our government, under the leadership of Premier Ford, is getting it done for all Ontarians. And now with that, I'll turn it over to my friend, my colleague, Ontario's new Minister of Transportation, the Honourable Prabhmeet Sarkaria. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister McCarthy, and uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you all for, for joining us here today. It's uh, great to be here uh, in Scarborough uh, to make my first uh, announcement as Ontario's new Minister of Transportation. Uh, while Minister Mulroney has certainly left me with big shoes to fill, I look forward to continuing her great work to get transportation projects built right across Ontario. I'm uh, so pleased to, to be joined here today uh, by my friend and Associate Minister of Transportation, uh, Todd McCarthy, uh, the Metrolinx CEO, uh, Mr. Phil Verster, and of course, uh, your local transportation uh, champions, uh, my good friends, uh, MPPs Eris Pabikian uh, and Vijay uh, Thanagaslam. They have been strong advocates uh, for bringing the right transit to, to Scarborough to get people where they need to go when they need to get there. As Ontario's new Minister of Transportation, I'm focused on continuing to make it easier for you to get around. Our province is growing faster than ever before. We're expecting more than a million people to come to Ontario in the next two years, and commuters need a public transit network that can keep up. This hits especially close to home for me as a dad and a resident of the GTA. Like many families, we rely on public transit to get to work, to a Jays game, or to visit friends. That's why in our budget, we're investing $70.5 billion over the next 10 years to build and expand public transit across Ontario. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, we have world-class projects like the Ontario Line, 
and the all-new subway extension right here in Scarborough. This includes significant investments to upgrade GO Transit infrastructure and bring more trains and faster service to communities across the entire network. And thanks to the advocacy of my PC colleagues here in Scarborough and Markham, we're making strong progress to get it done. Today, I am pleased to announce that major infrastructure upgrades here at Agent Corp and at Milliken GO stations on the Stouffville line are now complete. The upgrades at Milliken GO station include an additional track and platform, two new pedestrian tunnels, and additional vehicle and cycling lanes on Steeles Avenue. And here at Agent Court GO, commuters now have a brand new station with modern amenities, additional platforms, and pedestrian tunnels. These critical infrastructure upgrades will make travel faster and easier for commuters and support two-way, all-day, 15-minute GO train service along the line serving communities in Markham, Unionville, Scarborough, and Toronto. By the time we are finished, commuters on the Stouffville line will have up to 6,000 GO train trips per week compared with a current level of 2,000 trips per week. This will be a game changer creating jobs, improving access to employment centers, and driving economic growth across the region. We made a promise to the people of Ontario that we would build the public transit system they deserve. And today's announcement is another demonstration that we're keeping that promise. I look forward to maintaining this momentum and continuing to work closely with our partners at all levels of government to build the public transit network we need for our future. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here today, and I'll now open it up to questions and comments. We'll now go to questions. We'll now go to questions, and you can line up at the microphone behind you. Please identify yourself by being an Edward. Just a reminder, it will be one question, one follow-up. First question. Good morning, Minister. Good morning. Good morning. with uh, City News 680. Uh, we're just up the street from where the Scarborough RT used to run. Uh, and uh, as you know, it's now officially out of commission. And City, I know the mayor and uh, the city council want to see that dedicated bus lane built along the corridor, but it would come at a cost of about $60 million. I want to know if the province to uh, fund that, fund it partly, uh, step up to the plate at all. Well, thank you for that, that question, and we appreciate and understand how important uh, Scarborough is uh, to, to everyone uh, in the city of Toronto. That's why you know, we've committed uh, the largest uh, subway expansion uh, and infrastructure investment uh, for the people of Scarborough. You know, I've had many conversations uh, uh, with uh, not only my colleagues uh, here in Scarborough, uh, but uh, and many uh, months prior that are excited about the Scarborough extension. You know, I think uh, the people of Scarborough have been left behind for, for a very long time, ignored. Uh, promises have been made uh, about building transit in Scarborough. I'm proud to say that we have shovels in the ground on the Scarborough uh, subway extension. Uh, under the leadership of Premier Ford and my colleagues here uh, that are standing beside me, we're making good progress, uh, great progress uh, on that project because the people of uh, Scarborough deserve uh, that transit and that uh, investment that, that uh, our, uh, our government is uh, delivering on. Is the province interested in helping build that BRT bus line? Well, we're always uh, looking forward to working with our, our transit agencies or, uh, across uh, uh, the city of Toronto, uh, whether it be uh, not only in the city of Toronto, across many different regions. Our commitment to, to Scarborough is second to none. Uh, we want to support the people of Scarborough. Uh, that's why we have made uh, one of the largest uh, investments uh, uh, right here uh, in this city. Uh, uh, for the people of Scarborough that often have been ignored. You know, Premier Ford had a vision uh, to build the Scarborough uh, subway extension. We acted quickly. Uh, we put, uh, we've already got shovels in the ground on that project, uh, and we look forward to continuing to uh, have those conversations with our colleagues, uh, 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 not only at the city, uh, but across the province to continue delivering on those uh, priority projects. Hi, Minister. Good to meet you. Nick Westall with City TV. Uh, quick question for you, and uh, maybe, I don't know if Phil wants to maybe add to this after, but I want to chat with you about the Eglinton Crosstown and Finch West LRT. Um, we've seen delays on both projects. Just wondering what you've heard in your briefings about these, and what's the commitment for uh, opening? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, uh, look, I appreciate uh, uh, that there's uh, frustration uh, around uh, the Eglinton uh, Crosstown. Uh, what I can uh, say is, you know, as I've uh, continued to get briefed up uh, on this file, it's a very complicated, uh, complex uh, file. 
Um, uh, we're, I look forward to delivering uh, on a strong uh, and safe and reliable transit system uh, that includes uh, many of the investments that we're making, and Eglinton is a strong part of that. Uh, you know, I've asked uh, Phil to, to provide updates on the Eglinton uh, Crosstown uh, to the public uh, with respect to many of the questions uh, and uh, to ensure that we continue building that uh, safe and reliable uh, project. But maybe I will ask uh, Phil to, to maybe just uh, share a few words on that uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, and thank you for the question. Yes, over, over the summer, CTS, who is our contract on Eglin and Crosstown, ourselves made a lot of progress, significant progress, to rectify and improve the schedule. So I'm very pleased with it. The schedule has, has been, uh, is in a better, better condition. However, there's, been a lot, there's still a lot of challenges, but there's also a lot of progress. And because this is such an extensive uh, topic, you will very soon be informed of, and, and we want to share, I, I, we really want to share this with the public and with the media, and you'll very soon be informed of a technical media briefing, which we will arrange and give more details, significant more details about Eglinton, everything on the Eglinton Crosstown um, schedule. To your general question about the impact on, 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 um, on Finch West as well, uh, we, we have seen an impact on all of our projects during the COVID period. And all of these companies are recovering from the COVID period. And what we are doing here is we're making it possible for these companies to complete at the soonest possible time. And that's our objective. Thank you. No dates, technical discussion. We'll cover a lot of detail. We'll give you a sense then. Uh, thank you so much. I don't know who wants to field this next question, maybe Minister Sakari or the Associate Minister. I um, want to ask you about TTC Go Transit fare integration. Uh, Associate Minister Stan Cho previously committed to having that um, done by the end of the year. Uh, just wondering, from your perspective, is that still the plan to have that done by the end of the year? Because everywhere else in the GTA, you get on a local transit bus, fare free, and then get on a Go train. But that's not the case in Toronto. So what's the update on that, please? Thanks for the question on fare integration. It's a very important one and near and dear to my heart as a longtime resident of Durham Region. Growing up in Scarborough, I used to only take the TTC and, of course, moving to Durham uh, with my wife, Kathy, to buy our first home in uh, 1989. Uh, I then rode both the GO train and the TTC. And we now are on track for February 2024 for fare integration. And this will save the average individual commuter about $1,500 per year uh, that's a very, very important savings for our fellow citizens. Uh, and this is uh, true for Durham and, of course, across the GTA. So that fare integration is part of our plan going forward in the very near future. We're just on target five months away, February 2024. Thanks. Thank you, Minister. Minister, when you look at... Um funding formulas and not on a per ridership basis across on the operational expenses uh, across the GTA there's a, a great discrepancy in how much money each region gets for their per rider per rider supplement the city of Toronto is facing a huge budget shortfall and the mayor Chow has a, a huge task to try and balance the books but she does point out that this inequity be you know what I'm trying to say, um, is causing huge problems to the, the household tax payer in Toronto. Is, can she expect a relief? Uh, well, thank you for that question, uh, Jamie. Um, you know, we've always, uh, you know, under the leadership of Premier Ford, uh, we've always uh, shown that we are willing partners with, with all levels of, uh, of government. Uh, you know, when we look at the funding that uh, this government has provided uh, for the city uh, of Toronto. Uh, you know, when we look at the Safe Restart program, uh, gas tax uh, funding as well, uh, that's $2.7 billion and it accounts for a majority of the funding in many of these, uh, in many of these funding streams. Uh, and we've committed that. Uh, we've worked with the, the city of Toronto in the past. Uh, you know, I had a great conversation with uh, Jamal Myers, uh, who's, uh, uh, you know, leading transit as well at the city of Toronto yesterday. You know, I appreciate uh, uh, the passion uh, that all of us have uh, on getting transit built across the city. I'm looking forward to, to working with my colleagues, uh, Mayor Chow, uh, at the city of Toronto, uh, across this province, uh, uh, in some of our fastest growing regions. I appreciate and understand how important uh, these conversations are, and, and I look forward to, to continuing that d dialogue with uh, my colleagues uh, as well. And I promise I won't use big words again. <laughs> <laughs>
This will be the last question. Hi, John Woodward from CTV News. Um, the Greenbelt uh, land swap scandal has caused a big hit to the poll numbers of this government. It's prompted a cabinet shuffle that I believe has you in the position that you're in now. I'm wondering if you think that that land swap scandal is interfering with the ability of this government to accomplish some of its priorities. Um, look, we're, we're in the middle of the housing crisis. Uh, we're expecting a, a million people uh, over the next two years. Uh, we need to take strong action uh, on building homes. I'm proud to be in this role uh, as uh, part of the, um, the component of building transit. Uh, you know, $70 uh, billion uh, over the next 10 years are going to be uh, uh, utilized to build incredible uh, uh, transit uh, all across uh, the province. Uh, you know, we're standing here right to, today, uh, you know, announcing uh, investments and upgrades to improve service uh, on, on GO train lines. Um, uh, increasing all the way to a go service opportunities. Uh, I look forward to, to working with the city to build on the, the Ontario line, uh, the Scarborough subway extension that we have uh, right here uh, in this part of the city. Um, I'm focused on, on building, uh, building Ontario. I look at priority projects like the 413, uh, which uh, commuters have given us a strong mandate uh, to build, uh, and that I heard loud and clear when I was. Uh, uh, working uh, in not only in my previous role, but as a local uh, MPP as well. These are projects that I'm looking forward to building and, uh, and addressing uh, across uh, this province as well. Okay, one more for me, which is that the Integrity Commissioner's report showed a, a lot of connection between lobbyists and people connected to the party or former, former people within the Premier's office or within the party. And I'm wondering, what are you doing with your networks and, and your donors and your, your people that you're connected to to make sure that that influence and that, and that money isn't causing decisions that, are, that could be made that are in contrary to the public interest in this province? Well, I think we had a very strong mandate uh, from the people of this province uh, that we took uh, uh, with respect to building Ontario. Um, you know, I knocked on hundreds of doors. I've spoken to thousands of people uh, across many parts of this province uh, uh, speaking to what uh, our plan was uh, to build Ontario. That included building uh, Highway 413, building the Bradford Bypass, uh, making sure that we continued uh, the, the Scarborough uh, subway extension that we have uh, right here, the Ontario line. We're making record-breaking investments uh, under the leadership of Premier Ford that nobody else uh, has seen and any, uh, and any government has seen or any other jurisdiction in North America uh, for that matter. Um, you know, I'm inspired by uh, the mandate that the people gave us, uh, that we took to the people, and, and I think it was quite clear uh, that uh, the opposition uh, disagreed uh, quite uh, uh, aggressively uh, against uh, highways like the 413 and the Bradford Bypass. Uh, but uh, I'm here today to, to continue working on that mandate uh, that the people gave us and that the, the Premier and I have had many conversations on uh, to build uh, Ontario. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, everyone.